Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Tensions... <laughs> tens tensions are really escalating between Russia and Ukraine as Vladimir Putin continues his naked aggression. Naked from the waist up. And <laughs> Russia has troops massed at the border. They've been doing this for months. And Russian officials like Sergei Lavrov and Tucker Carlson have been saying... <laughs> It's just a military exercise. And the Biden administration has been warning, that's all lies. Nobody masses three-quarters of their standing army on the border of a country they said doesn't exist and then doesn't invade. And tonight, you really get, you really get a vibe right now that the borscht is about to hit the fan. <laughs> so don't forget, after the show, stick around for Ryan Seacrest rocking World War III Eve. <laughs> Here's what's, here's what's transpired just in the last 24 hours. Immediately after Putin unilaterally declared the two breakaway Ukrainian provinces were now independent nations, the Russian military moved into Donetsk. That is shocking. 1,490 rubles for an iron? <laughs> I wouldn't pay more than 500 kopecks. <laughs> this is only the beginning, because today the U.S. warned the Ukrainian government that the latest intelligence points to a full-scale Russian invasion imminently. Their first clue? The 190,000 troops with the bang-bang sticks and the all-steel shoot mobiles. <laughs> that warning courtesy of the U.S. State Department. <laughs> sure enough, this afternoon we learned that Russia moved nearly 100% of its troops into invasion-ready position. Of course, we can see all this with our satellites. No one doesn't see what's coming. But the Kremlin has claimed that rebel leaders in eastern Ukraine have asked Russia for military help to fend off Ukrainian aggression. Yes, they say Ukraine is the aggressor, just like Tokyo was asking for it by taunting Godzilla. <laughs> now, today, Ukrainian President Zelensky declared a 30-day state of emergency, calling up all military reservists between the ages of 18 and 60. Wow. 18 and 6... As a 57-year-old myself, <laughs> let me just say, I'm flattered. <laughs> but really? There's a reason I don't run out here anymore. <laughs> because right around here, my supply lines start to break down. <laughs> a platoon of 60-year-olds makes no sense. The Russians will hear our knees popping from a mile away. <laughs> They're gonna... <laughs> Our is a strong word. Hour, hour is a strong word. They're gonna keep leaving the battlefield to pee. <laughs> Where are they supposed to plug in their water picks and their CPAP machines? <laughs> Do the Ukrainian military tents even have walk-in bathtubs? <laughs> also, the Ukrainian government will now allow ordinary civilians to carry firearms. That's right, this situation is so dire. Ukraine has become Texas. <laughs> President Biden... Texas. Don't mess with Ukraine. You don't mess with Ukraine. President Biden has already started making Putin pay for his invasion, imposing sanctions on two of Russia's most prominent banks and, on a more personal note, sanctioning the sons of two of Putin's closest officials. If he's going after children of Putin's cronies, can I suggest a couple? <laughs> I would love it. That's right. Personally, there they go, there they go. I would love it, especially later in the summer. <laughs> Russia is acting nonchalant about all of this. Their ambassador to the U.S. tweeted, It is hard to imagine that someone in hashtag Washington is counting on Russian flag emoji <laughs> to revise its foreign policy under the threat of sanctions. I don't remember a single day when our country lived without any restrictions from the Western world. Sanctions, sanctions. Great Russian people love suffering. We don't need decadent Western Apple phone. I typed this tweet on actual potato phone. <laughs> Hello, it is my dictator. Hi. <laughs> I kid. I kid. There is no one there. <laughs> is potato. <laughs> is potato. Some people... <laughs> Eastern promises. <laughs> Some people, of course, were disappointed that the sanctions weren't harsher. 
Ukraine's foreign minister tweeted, to stop Putin from further aggression, we call on partners to impose more sanctions on Russia now. First decisive steps were taken yesterday, and we are grateful for them. Now the pressure needs to step up to stop Putin. Hit his economy and cronies. Hit more. Hit hard. Hit now. Is this guy foreign minister or Kiev's morning DJ? <laughs> hit more. Hit hard. Keep those hits coming. Hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. <laughs> up next is a Zeppelin rock block on sanctions at 7. You're listening to WUKR with Crazy Dimitri and the Mayor. Rock! I don't want to work. I just want to bang on the drum. Oh, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. The U.S. acknowledges that sanctions didn't go as far as they could have gone, but this is just the first tranche of sanctions. If Putin escalates his aggression, the administration is considering far stiffer penalties, including blocking Russia from access to the U.S. dollar. Oh, really? <laughs> Bet you'd like to get your hands on this, wouldn't you, Vlad? Hmm? <laughs> Let me introduce you to my friend George here. Mm, that smells like wooden teeth. Mm. <laughs> you want this? Shake it up for your daddy, Vladdy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, more countries agreed to jump on the sanction bus, including Canada, Japan, and Australia. Oh, you do not want to mess with the Aussies. Because <laughs> they're going to send this guy. <laughs> so, kangaroo had it coming. Kangaroo. Oh, man. Looks like Putin's uh, gonna start a deadly ground war that will trigger steep sanctions and no doubt cause pain for the Russian people. So why is he doing it? Some analysts think he's got COVID-induced paranoia. And I, I get that. I mean, at one point, at the height of the pandemic, I started to think that Evie had watched the next episode of Bridgerton without me. <laughs> and I fired heavy artillery into the breakfast nook. So far, every Western democracy is standing in solidarity opposing Putin, with the possible exception of the Republican Party, especially their dear leader, former president, super callous, fragile, racist, sexist, Nazi POTUS. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Got a... I'll take it. Hey, Mary I'll Poppins. Take it. Thing. <laughs> Yesterday, Yesterday, he was like the fourth caller on some radio show. <laughs> And he waxed autocratic about the Russian leader. I went in yesterday and there was a television screen, and I said, This is genius. Yeah, he, he couldn't believe it. How'd they get the people in there? <laughs> he went on. Putin declares it as independent. Oh, that's wonderful. So Putin is now saying it's independent, a large section of Ukraine. I said, How smart is that? I haven't seen a president cheer on the Russians this hard since the Cuban Missile Crisis when Eisenhower wore the T-shirt, Khrushchev is a zaddy. <laughs> then, the former president's admiration took an even stranger turn. And he's going to go in and be a peacekeeper. That's the strongest peace force. We could use that on our southern border. So he wants... Moscow to invade Mexico? <laughs> okay, you heard the man. Let's gas up the tanks. Go annex Cancun. I'm going to rename it Comrade Frogs. Shots, 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 shots. Start firing the shots. And <laughs> in, in other... Sure. Sure. In other alarming news, Florida, where <laughs> the GOP has advanced its don't say gay bill in the House. This is going to be awful for Florida's LGBTQ community and its karaoke bars. And next up is Jamie singing Sexual Healing by Marvin Redacted. <laughs> this bill, which the Republicans call the Parental Rights and Education Bill, stipulates that classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through third grade. Not mentioning gender identity could make it hard to start the class. Good morning, boys and girls, and I'm fired. <laughs> On the plus side, the first day of fourth grade is gonna get super interesting. <laughs> All right, Brandon, shut the door. There's a whole lot of cool stuff we've been keeping from you. <laughs> Don't tell the third graders, or I'm... This bill would also give parents the power to sue violators. I hate to break it to you, parents, 
but whoever's trying to sue a teacher is going to be super disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to sue you for all you got, mister. I'm talking your stubby glue sticks and every last one of your copies of Red Badge of Courage that you had to buy yourself. That'll teach you to teach. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are the hosts of Showtime's The Circus, but when we come back, it's time for another installment of Stephen Colbert's Romance Planning.